I, you know, I mean, just to break it down, I mean, essentially you're doing four marathons. So someone do the math for me. I, what, do, what is your average marathon time on these runs? Uh, I, th I think on that, on that day, it was like right around a 303 marathon or somewhere in that ballpark. Oh, oh my God. I mean, for the, imagine running four <laughs> three-hour marathons. I mean, that, that's just unbelievable to me, honestly. And then, okay, for our viewers and our listeners' sake, you know, folks, he's doing it in a fat adapted state. And, and I would argue, um, you know, that's the, the, the best, most efficient way, right? So tell us a little bit about that. Were you doing this before non-fat adapted? And, you know, now you've got your mitochondria used to utilizing fat, which is a, definitely a better fuel to go on and on. Tell yeah, it's it's been an interesting journey, no doubt. I, I started ultra running on very much a stereotypical endurance athlete diet protocol, uh, primarily carbohydrate, um, you know, not, I wouldn't say like no or low fat approach, but it was definitely one of the minority macronutrients. Um, it, it was dwarfed by the carbohydrate consumption for sure. Yeah. And then in, at, at the end of around 2011, I started kind of experimenting with uh, using fat as my primary fuel source. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, you know, I've been uh, really fortunate to have guys like Dr. Volick and Dr. Finney um, kind of uh, uh, to bounce questions off of and stuff like that. And um, it, it really just, it, for me, it was like, I've always been a big fan of self-experimentation. I like that part of it. That's just as intriguing as kind of the competition itself for me. Yeah, so kind of, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of finding like what works for me and what works for my lifestyle. Because uh, one of the biggest uh, things I've noticed over the last five years is that lifestyle plays a huge role in like what high fat means to you. And for me, you know, with peak training and then recovery, my day-to-day -day life doesn't look the same every day. So kind of finding out like what windows of high fat uh, work at what times and when is the best time to use one approach and when's the best time to use another approach to maximize performance um, is key because uh, you know someone who's taking on a high fat or a ketogenic uh, protocol just for health purposes or if they're sick or something like that it looks a lot different than someone using it to try to you know run a hundred miles so I always try to emphasize that because people oftentimes assume like it's kind of uh, a template that can just be plugged in for anyone, but uh, you know, a lot of other variables need to be considered. Yeah, I and mean, for a lot of our you know clients, and we have a lot of doctors that watch the show. We we move them in and out of ketosis. I, I refer to mm -hmm. diet variation because there's a benefit we've learned by moving in and out of different diets, even seasonally, even weekly, for goodness' sakes. You know, having higher carb days to you know get your insulin to you know respond. Um, you know, in a better direction oftentimes. But, you know, I mean, when you're dealing as an athlete, I mean, look, I can go out and I don't have to eat breakfast. I intermittent fast every day. So I can get out, I can ride three, four hours on my bike and I do just fine without eating and then I come home and eat, right? And people find that fascinating, especially the higher carbers that I ride with who are eating the whole time I'm riding. Right, that's, that's a three, four hour ride. I mean, I'm fat adapt. I can go out and ski all day and eat dinner and I'm fine, right? And I don't bonk at all. But we're talking about 100 miles. I mean, okay, so you have to eat during this 100-mile race. You know, I mean, what are you eating? You know, what's, you know, how, what's the formula, man? I mean, that, that's, you still have to eat. Yeah, yeah. It's been something I've experimented with a little bit and I've had coaching clients and friends do it differently than me and have success as well. But for me, what I found is uh, before when I was high carb, I was eating, you know, upwards to 400, maybe even 500 calories an hour in some of these events. Um, uh, admittedly, I hadn't done any hundred milers yet at that point. So like I was able to finish within kind of a five to seven hour window because they were more like 50 mile type type endeavors and um, you know so you can kind of hit your stomach pretty hard for for that long but what from what I read is when most people are running into trouble from a digestive standpoint uh, it was in those like 10th 11th 12th plus hour range where where they'd been hitting their stomach with gels and sugars all day long and then all of a sudden um, especially in the heat it would they'd start to reject it so um, as I kind of moved 
towards uh, trying out 100 mile distance stuff, I started looking at that as more of a preventative type of move. And, you know, now I've gotten that down to even in some of the, I, I'll say sh shorter, faster ultra marathons where I'm still kind of in like uh, a much lower carbohydrate feed than I was previously. I've cut that by more than half and it's usually between maybe 150 and 250 calories an hour. Um, and then the, it's, it's interesting because the hundred milers actually require less because I'm going at a lower intensity. So if I go into that, that event really fat adapted, then, you know, I can rely more on fat and, you know, even at your leanest state, the leanest athletes, you know, have enough body fat to get them through a long event like that. Uh, you know, especially with when you, when you put into consideration, whatever glycogen stores they had and anything they're eating along the way. Like they've got plenty of body fat. The fuel tank is much larger than your than your glycogen glycogen reserves. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, I try to eat as little as possible without sacrificing performance. Um, and the reason for that is because I see eating as an extra variable. It's a uh, it's another task I'm giving my body. Um, so if I can get away without eating something, then I want to do that because it's gonna require less blood diverted to my stomach for digestion, right. um, which is another reason why I really don't eat a whole lot of fat while I'm doing these events either. Um, yeah. I would probably do it differently if I'm getting into like the 24 hour plus range. Um, but you know, I don't, I, I, I see like if I'm going to burn fat, I may as well burn body fat during the event because that's bypassing the digestive tract. So then that just basically leaves carbohydrates um, and uh, I use them sparingly, but I do use them in events. I'll trickle them in kind of throughout at like what I said before, that kind of 150 to 250 calorie per hour range. Uh, and then just really stay on top of hydration and electrolytes. Uh, so that's kind of uh, the, the game plan heading into most of those things. Yeah, I would think the electrolytes play a, a, a big deal. You know, and, and for our viewers and listeners, when we talk about fat adapted, you know, we really mean that our mitochondria get so efficient at using mostly fat for energy that we're able to go longer periods without relying on our glucose stores and our glycogen stores. And, you know, the body does become much more efficient. Like I think you said, going into it, if you go into it very fat adapted, then your body just is so efficient at using its body fat, which someone would look at you or me and say, you don't have body fat. Right. Have body fat. Probably 50,000 calories stored <laughs> of body fat on either one of us. Um, you know, and, and that's what you want to burn. I, I, yeah. I was going to say that. I, I knew that you probably weren't eating a bunch of fat during the race because that would definitely bloat you perhaps and you know, just be more effort to break down than a simple, simple sugar. Um, so just by eating 150 to 250 calories an hour, your body's still relying on its fat to get the, the majority of the energy, but you're relying on that just to help, you know, supplement it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, you know, there is, uh, you know, I always look, I look at carbohydrates kind of the same way I would caffeine. It's, uh, something that is definitely a performance boost. Uh, but there's a fine line between too much and too or too much in the right amount. So you want to keep your body sharp. So if I what I found is by training uh, in a state where fat is the majority of my macronutrient from a day to day standpoint, um, it gives my body the sensitivity needed to kind of make carbohydrate work kind of as a rocket fuel. So when I do take it, it's it's very effective. Yeah, no, I I find the same thing. If I if I do use a carbohydrate like that, like if I'm out really long, it's like wham, you know, I mean, your body, it is like rocket fuel. That was a, that was a good analogy. So, um, you know, it's, it's remarkable because, you know, understanding that the human body can go that long. I read history about the American Indians and I, I had recently read of, you know, the Wyoming Indians and how they would become fat adapted and they would literally chase prey you know, all day long. I mean, their, their endurance was incredible. And in the article, in the history, it was really a history piece. It was really because they were fat adapted. So I would have to say, this is nothing new. <laughs> this has actually been used by ancient culture. So not, not to take anything away from you, but it's nothing new. <laughs> no, we, we definitely kind of took a step away from it for a few decades there. And now it seems like we're, we're kind of digging back into it a bit, or at least 
at least it's out there and people have some information to go off of if they want to, you know, take on the approach. Yeah. But let me tell you something from a standpoint of health. The most important thing you do, look, these carbohydrate athletes, you know, that are high carbohydrates, they're all getting this point in their life. They start crossing over in their 50s and 60s, and they're developing autoimmune degenerative diseases, inflammatory conditions. You know, even though they stayed thin, they realized that it wasn't healthy. So you can burn all that sugar, but you're really forcing your mitochondria when you're burning sugar. It drives a ton of oxidative stress that really mm -hmm. causes a lot of injury to your DNA. There's something called telomeres. I'm telling the people this. You probably know this, but telomeres are the only biological clock that we know of. And as they shorten, you become closer and closer to death. Endurance athletes get there very quickly. But we mm -hmm. used to think it was maybe just from all the endurance. We're really finding out it's really from the driving from the high carbohydrate diets. It definitely shortens your telomeres and shortens your age. So you're, you're an exception. Now we're getting back to these fat adapted carb, uh, athletes. I th say you're going to live a normal life. Yeah, you know, I, I hope so because, <laughs> because like I know for me, like a lot of this stuff with the ultra marathons, it's it's I very much feel like I've crossed the line of doing it for health standards and, you know, I'm, I'm more into the realm of uh, performance and um, that's not always good for longevity. No, it's not. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things, too, about, you know, enjoying enjoying what you're doing while you're here. And uh, rather than kind of asking what if for an extended amount of time, uh, you know, with that said, though, I, I, I want to prolong my existence as long as possible. And that's definitely part of the reason why I, I, I take the high fat approach um, as opposed to a, a really, really high carbohydrate approach um, beyond the fact that I, I believe it's actually a performance benefit for me to, to keep macronutrients from the fat sources at the highest part of my, my nutrition. Absolutely. I believe there's no doubt of performance benefits, but for me, there's a massive health benefit. I think it's going to keep you alive.